Hey everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to introduce you to different types of motions. So we're going to talk about the motion data library. Uh, we're going to talk about front and side facing motions, as well as start, loop, and end motions in uh, different directions. Uh, we're also going to talk about align bone pivot at the very end of this tutorial. Okay, so first of all, let's add a character onto our screen. Now the scene that you see in front of you right here, this is available embedded with Cartoon Animator 4. You can go into your scene tab over here. And under scene, you'll find this animated beach. Just double click on that and it'll add to your scene. You can see if we play back, we just have the ocean coming in, some birds, an animated uh, palm tree leaves and everything like that. Okay, so let's add a character to our scene so we can animate him. I'm gonna go over here to actor tab and under the character folder right here, you can see there's a character folder. We'll, have, we'll find uh, G3360 characters. These are new with Cartoon Animator 4 and G3360 humans. Okay, we can go twirl on that, uh, twirl on that. There's miscellaneous stuff in here. I'm just gonna use one of the regular humans here. Okay, this folder right here. And we're gonna go to the bottom and bring in our good old boy, Ted here. Now you can see Ted has three different angle profiles. He has a front facing one indicated by the F in the name right there. There's a side facing one at 45 degrees indicated by the S uh, here in the name. And there's also a 90 degree uh, completely side facing profile indicated by S2. Okay, now all the G3, all, all the G3 360 humans will have these profiles. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna bring Ted in. Okay, I'm gonna double click Ted, uh, the 45 degree angle side facing one. And when you double click a character or anything, it'll add to your scene root, which is this axis here with the red and the blue uh, crosshairs. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to apply a couple of animations to Ted. We're gonna take a look at the animation library. So if you go over to the animation tab and we twirl all this stuff up, you'll find uh, the motions, okay? Under motions, you'll find G3 humans, animals, spine, all this stuff. Uh, we're gonna be using a G3 human uh, motion because this is a G3 uh, character. And uh, we're going to go into there. And you'll find these Turner's male and Turner's female folders, okay? These are for the G3 360 characters in Cartoon Animator 4. And a couple of these other ones that we've you know brought in from previous versions. Uh, we're gonna be dealing exclusively with this Turner's uh, male folder here. So I'm gonna twirl that down. And you can see if we go to the front subfolder here, we have a number of different front facing motions indicated by the big F, the big F on the top left of the thumbnail there, okay? That means these are front facing motions. If I go to the side folder, you'll see that that's replaced by an S, indicating these are side facing motions, okay? Now, there's a number of different motions. You can see here at the top, we have a number of poses. There's three poses. Uh, if you have a pose, if your name has pose in it, that means it's not really an animation. It's just going to put your character into a pose. Like if we double click this one, we can put Ted into a fighting pose. And if we, uh, you know, play back, he's not really doing anything. It's just a pose. Okay. You can do the same thing with the sit, uh, sit pose. Okay. Just like this. And if we go to frame one, you can maybe position him up here and have him sit on, on the edge of this uh, lawn, or not lawn chair, beach chair, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Good enough. Uh, but what we're going to talk about is something a bit more interesting. We're going to talk about actually moving our character and animations. So aside from those poses, we also have a number of different other animations as well. Like you can have uh, Ted do a backflip, okay? Eee, right? These are side facing motions. Um, there's stuff like this, like climbing ladders. Okay, we'll talk about these a little bit later. Uh, there's that one, for example. We can have Ted, you know, thinking about stuff. We can have him uh, dribbling, okay? These are all motions that are that are um, specified for, uh, optimized rather, for uh, side facing characters. Okay, and if you want to remove all the animation from your character, you can just go to frame one and you can just right click your character and select remove object animation. And that will remove all the animation on the character. Okay, let's position him back down here. All right, so what we're gonna talk about next is we're gonna talk about walking motions, okay? So walking motions and, and loops, um, let's go down here on our side. You can see there's a ton of different motions here. We're going to go to the very bottom and we'll find uh, some walking motions. Okay, so there's three walking motions here. There's walk and then you can see the name 1S. The S stands for start. Okay, and then there's walk 2L. The L stands for loop and walk 3E. The E stands for end. Okay, so you can probably uh, guess that this is gonna, these are going to be used in combination start, loop, and end. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that. What I'm going to do is just apply the walk 1S. That's going to be the start of our character's walk. He's just going to start to take one step. And then we'll apply walk 2L. Okay, so this is the second part. And this uh, animation will cause our character to take a couple of steps. 
And then we can use walk 3e standing for end and bring our character to a stop. Okay, so if we go back to frame one and play back, there you can see our character walking in place. Okay, so these are called in-place motions. They're not going to be moving across the scene unless you change the transform position. And we'll talk about that right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the uh, timeline here. You can also press the F3 hotkey. Okay, and Ted will pop up. I highly recommend having this um, object-related track enabled, okay, because when you select an object in your scene, your timeline will automatically change to that object, okay? Uh, if you're just focusing on one object at a time, which people normally are. Okay, so if we want to find those motions that we added, we need to go into the motion tracks here. And we open up the motion tracks. You can see that we have under the motion track right here, we have our walk 1S, we have our walk 2L, and we have our walk 3E. Okay, fairly simple stuff. If we play back by pressing the space key, you can see, there we go. Okay, it just kind of cycles through the entire thing. And we can click and drag up here and cycle through it as well. Now, what, what if I want to, you know, say, for example, have my character take more steps? Well, I can apply the walk to L again, or I could simply just loop it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop it. I'm going to show you how to loop here. We're going to click and drag this last clip all the way down here somewhere where we, it's not going to be in our way. And I'm going to click on this clip right here. And then we're going to go up here and make sure that we have loop enabled. Okay. Not stretch or not speed rather. This is speed. We need to have loop enabled. Okay, and when we have loop enabled, we can click and drag on the edge of our clip. You'll see the icon will, or the cursor will change slightly. Just click and drag, and it'll create another loop of that same animation. So here we have it. You can see he'll just continue walking, but this time he'll take twice as many steps. And then we'll take our walk uh, 3E clip and tag it onto the end there. So now if we play back, we'll have the entire thing like this. He'll take twice as many steps, and then finally end. Okay, now what if you want to change the position? What if you want to make your character walk from one place to the next? Well, it's actually pretty easy. All you have to do is open up your transform track. So transform is the transform position of your character. That's the position of your character on the screen. Okay, so if I play back, you can see we'll go through here. And when we end, okay, when our character finally takes his last step here, which is right about here, we want to basically move our character forward. And the way to do that, just left click and drag on your character and he'll move forward like this. Now you'll notice that there's a green line that follows beneath your or behind your character. And that's just indicating the transform position. Now if we play back, let's go ahead and press the space key. You'll notice that he's walking along, but he seems to be kind of sliding a little bit. Like basically he's trying to cover too much ground and not taking enough steps. So he's kind of just like sliding as if, as if skating along the sand. Okay, now to avoid a situation like that, what you want to do is you want to go to the exact same frame in your transform track that your keyframe is at, okay? So when I changed the transform position, it added this keyframe right here, okay? Now what I can do to uh, avoid that sliding is I can move my character to a shorter distance away from where his, from his origin point, okay? And then if we play back something like this, you can see he'll take regular steps and it won't seem like he's sliding. Okay, so be aware that when you're, you know, using these sorts of, uh, these sorts of clips, these uh, in-place motions and in combination with the transform, uh, character transform of the position, you want to make sure your feet are not sliding. You want to make sure that they're just taking small steps. Uh, this guy has small stubby legs, so let's not give him too much of a hard time by making him slide along the sand there. Okay, so that's really all there is to it for these in-place motions and uh, looping your clips. Uh, using them all together in combination. What I'm going to do is at frame one, I'm going to right click my character and remove object animation. And that's going to remove all the animation that we did on our character. Okay, just an easy and quick way to do that. Now in Cartoon Animator 4, we have new different new motions. And these motions are very similar to root motions, okay? And root motions are basically where it uses your character's, uh, uses the aligned bone pivot point to, uh, to drive your character forward. So you're not going to have to use the transform position. The actual motions themselves will drive your character forward. Now pay attention to these walking motions here. All they have is just the character on the screen. They have the character on the, on the thumbnail and the S, okay? However, if we go up here to walk uh, these ones right here, okay, walk forward. Uh, they're called walk forward right here. Let's try and get there. There we go. Okay, walk forward and walk forward 1S. Okay, that's the start one. That's the loop one, and this one is the end one, okay? 
Now we have the same thing, except this character has two lines behind the, the uh, character, on, or this rather thumbnail has two lines behind the character on the, on the thumbnail. And that indicates it's a root changing motion, okay, like a root motion. And that's using the align bone pivot point to drive the character forward. So let's take a look at the difference on this one. If I double click on the walk forward, you'll actually see my character move forward. We don't have any transform position change, but the motion itself is driving the character forward. Let's throw in the second one and see what happens. Okay, you'll see that this one, our character is continuing to move forward. Now again, we can loop this or we can uh, you know, just apply it again. I'm gonna show you what happens if you loop it. Okay, if you, if you try and loop one of these root motions, uh, what's gonna happen? So let's click it right here and let's just loop it. Same thing we did before, but look what happens now. Move our character forward and he'll go back into the same position just like this, okay? Or into the original position that because these basically these clips here, these two clips, they're duplicates of each other. And the bone pivot point is going to be the same thing at the beginning of both. So it's going to kind of just take you back to boink, right there, just like that. You can see at the beginning of this one and of that one. So unfortunately, if you're looping your clips, then you're not able to kind of just uh, fix this issue unless you manually tra change the transform position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, loop and I'm going to loop it back. Okay, we can also reverse the loop by clicking and dragging like this and going to the left. And what we're going to do is at the last frame of the previous clip, we're going to apply that walk forward again, okay? You can click it or you can double click it and you can also just use this button here to apply it to your character and you'll see the same problem will happen, okay? So from here to here, boop, boop, we're popping forward just like that, okay? But at this first frame of the second clip, what I can do in this case is I can right click that second clip and I can select align and align to hip, okay? And what that's going to do is it's going to align to the hip bone from the previous clip. All right, so it's gonna have the, basically the same thing, a flawless transition from one point to the next, okay? So we have something like this, just walking along, and you can see just a simple flawless transition. Okay, pretty simple stuff, and that's an easy way to, to fix these uh, root motions. Uh, when you have an issue like that, um, just uh, apply it again and align to the hip of the previous clip. It even rhymes, align to the hip of the previous clip, align to the hip of the previous clip. So that's an easy way to remember it, okay? And we can get a nice result like this. Okay, another way we can do this is we can just uh, click on our second clip and delete it. And we can go up here, uh, we can go up to edit and motion clip, and we can make sure that align with previous motion is selected, okay? If you go to edit, uh, motion clip, and align with previous motion is selected, it's just going to automatically align it to the previous motion. So if we apply that one more, one more time, the walk forward like this, Okay, it'll automatically align it to the previous clip. Okay, so we won't have to worry about the, uh, you know, align to the hip of the previous clip. A uh, little rhyme that I came up with there. And we'll just go forward like this. All right, he's slowly walking down the beach in his uh, suit and tie. And then we can uh, finally at the end, we can apply the uh, end one here, the walk forward end, and our character will stop walking. Okay, so we have a long and arduous trip across this, uh, desert here uh, stops at the beach ball okay so that's really about all i wanted to show you guys um using the align bone pivot in various ways to just uh you know use your make sure your root motions are aligned and smooth and there's no foot sliding um various ways you can do this of course uh, i just showed you a couple of methods um, but uh, what you use in the end is up to you depending on the scenario that you're in all right so thanks so much for watching everyone um hopefully you learned a lot in this tutorial and as always, make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com and our learning center for more tutorial videos. And I hope to see you in the next video.